Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to my computer craft tutorial about how I made my Mistcraft portal room. I'm actually filming this on Forgecraft instead of in a single player room, so it's a little bit easier just to demonstrate and show you guys how it works. Now for this is really two components. Uh, there's the main computer, which I have hidden behind this chest here. You can kind of put that under, underneath the monitor if you want. It doesn't have to be on the side. I just kind of like having it accessible there. Um, and then there's the turtle here that interacts with it. Um, this is a disk drive. I think Neptune put it there, so it's really not necessary. Necessary. Uh, it's just totally optional. It's uh, all you really need is a turtle and a computer and then you need some kind of chest It can be a wooden chest diamond gold, whatever you want. That's all you need to get started Okay, so let's take a look at the code. So remember this is a coding tutorial So it's gonna be almost entirely code if that's not your style, you know, it's an extra video. So it's cool Let's take a look at how it works first I'm going to show you guys what you need to get started the first thing you're going to need is the button API. So I'm going to put a paste bin put button. So you just need to grab that and put it there. And as long as you have that on your computer, this should work pretty well. You're also going to need the uh, portal code. So let me put paste bin put portal as well. So now you can go ahead and download both of those and you're good to go. Let's walk through the portal code and see how it works. First thing we do is just initialize some variables and a couple things. We load that button API so that it's ready. We wrap the peripheral on the left and uh, we do a clear. And then we do a rednet.open bottom. Okay. Now the reason, by the way, that we're wrapping the peripheral on the left is uh, I'll kind of show you here. That's the monitor. Okay. So wrapping peripheral left grabs the monitor, and uh, the uh, rednet.open on the bottom opens the modem on the bottom. So it's a wireless redstone modem. Cool. Uh, a couple of just variables we start off with that I'll explain in a minute. Page is the current page we're looking at. Pages is the total number of pages overall, which we calculate in a bit. Names, turtles, and then um, remove is a variable, true or false, that we'll check out in a bit too. First thing we do is check out how many turtles are out there. So you have to just give the turtle IDs that are associated with, with this program. So you could have multiple turtles if you want. So if you want to have like turtles on the side of this uh, crystal receptacle, you can. And uh, right now I'm only using one turtle, and he happens to be ID 47. So if we take a look at this, this is computer labeled 47. These are the only things you're going to have to change. So if you want to just download and use this code, go for it. Just go ahead and put down the, the, the monitor, put down the um, turtle, and just change the ID number 47 uh, to match the ID of the turtle. And the program should just up and run and start working. It shouldn't be too bad. So while I'm at it, why don't I paste bin put... Uh, the, the program here, what did I call it? Paste bin put books. Cool. Um, that's the one that, you know, grabs the books from the chest, puts it in the receptacle, and kind of waits for a message from this program. So the basic way this thing works is this computer sends a message to the turtle telling him what to do. The turtle can do a couple things. It can put books into and pull out of the crystal receptacle, and it can look into the chest to see which books are in there. And it can read each book and see the uh, tooltip on the bottom, so you can see basically the name of the book or where it leads to. Then it sends that information back to the computer, which displays it on the monitor. The computer here waits for you to right-click a button. The buttons are that you can either click on where you want to go. So if I want to go to Dyer's Place, I can click on that. If I want to go to Sev's Island Paradise, I can click on that. And I can turn the pages. I can also choose to remove a book, which will cause the turtle to pull that specific book out of the chest. You simply click Remove Book, and on the name of the book, and it'll pull it out of the chest and dump it into the wooden pipe on the side. The wooden pipes are optional, but it's just kind of nice to be able to tell people, hey, put your books in here. So what happens is uh, if you place a book in here, it'll get pumped out through Buildcraft pipes into the chest, and it'll tell the computer here to recalculate and figure out, you know, um, if a new book has been put in. And likewise, when you remove a book, it just gets pulled out with the wooden pipe and sent to this chest. So that's a high level of how this code works. Now let's dig into the details. First thing that's important to do is we fill the table. Now this is where we define all the buttons and how they're laid out. Okay, so that will kind of come back to because that's one of the more complicated programs that are out there and you'll see how that works in a minute. Next page and previous page, that's how we turn our pages. It's really pretty simple. It just uh, takes a look at that variable that's the current page. It checks to make sure um, the one, the next page would not be outside the range. So if you only have two pages here, it makes sure that, you know, you don't click next page and go to page three of two. That would be kind of silly. So that's all that that if statement is doing. Um, and if that's the case, then it goes ahead and uh, adds one to the page or subtracts one from the current page. And then it calls that fill table program again, which refreshes the screen and shows you which buttons we're looking at. 
Okay. The get names program is pretty simple. Remember I told you guys that you can have multiple turtles here. So it takes a look at all the turtles and their ID numbers. And it goes through each ID number of the turtle. So in this case, we've only got one. But if we had three, it would go talk to all three turtles. Or if we had two, it would go talk to the two of the turtles. Okay? And uh, it basically says, um, hey, for uh, the, the, the turtle that we're talking about here, let's go ahead and send that turtle ID a message saying get names. Okay? And then it sits there and waits for the message to come in. Okay. Once it receives that message, basically it receives a table, and we break that table down into an actual table. Uh, it's uh, a serialized table, which means it turns the table into a string of numbers and characters, and uh, it, we just break it down and store it in the names variable here. So that's basically what we're looking at, is we go ahead and say, hey turtle, give me the names that you have in your inventory or in the chest below you, and then uh, I'll sit here and wait, and once I receive them, I store those names in a variable. So that's how I get all the names of the books over here. So let's look a look at the turtle and how it actually does that. It runs a function called get names, okay? And it's really pretty easy, okay? Uh, all we gotta do is the following. The first code that runs is called check slots, and what it does is it, uh, you know, defines a couple variables, and then it uses, um, this is the part of the code that's going to use open peripherals, okay? What it does is it wraps the chest below it as a peripheral. Without the open peripherals mod, you can't do this. So this part is specific to open peripherals, which is an add-on for computer craft. Okay, so it wraps that as a peripheral and it kind of treats the chest below it like a peripheral as if it were a monitor or a modem and you can interact with the chest directly with the code. You can do this with a bunch of the blocks um, in the game with open peripherals, by the way. And it basically looks at all the items in the slots below it. Okay, and it goes through each one and it gets the destination field out of it. So it takes a look at them. They're all got a bunch of different information stored on each one of these items. And it looks at the destination field and stores that in a variable. Okay? So there we go. And we can store that in a array. And then we wind up sending that information directly to the computer when it was asked for it. So basically what happens is the computer says, give me a list of all the books you got. This turtle comes down here. It looks through all the items in the chest below it. And for each of those items, it pulls off the name of the book and then sends that information back to the main computer. As a simple example of how this peripheral wrapping works, I've gone ahead and uh, chosen to grab one of the books and show you all the data that's available on the book. I'm showing you the data that's available in slot number two of the inventory. So this should be the one labeled CPW's Whole. Okay, so let's see what happens when I run this demo program. So you can see here that it tells you its ID number, its linking book, um, what the raw name of the item is, the destination is CPW's Whole. You can also check the damage, the max stack size, and the current quantity in that slot. So, so all I really care about is the destination, which is why I'm pulling out that destination field. Cool. So that's how we figure out what items are in what slots and the names on them. And whenever I ask for it, it runs this get names command, which serializes the data, which basically takes a table and turns it into a really long string, um, and then sends that information back to the computer that requested it. So you can see it's doing that right there, RedNet send to the original computer that requested it. It sends that name table. The next thing I'm going to show you guys is how it opens the portal when you right click on a button. First off, it checks where you right clicked on and it gets the name of that button uh, using the following uh, program down he uh, here. Okay, it's called get click and it basically says, um, you know, if the monitor was touched, find out where it was touched, and that's part of the button API. It figures out the name of the button, and then once it has that, it goes ahead and calls this open portal function, okay? And the way this works is it, uh, you know, goes through, and it checks for which turtle to talk to and which um, slot in the turtle it has, because one of the things it does when it gets its information is not only is this turtle sending the names of the books over, but it also sends which slot it's in. So if we come up here and take a look again at the check slots function, we can see that we're seeing that um, it basically says, here's the array I'm storing, the slot in the chest that it's associated with, and the name of the book. So it says, you know, in slot one, it's Direwolf's house, in slot two, it's CPW's house, right? So it's associating with each slot in the chest. Slot 3 is the promised land, slot 4 is the overworld, okay? So real simple. That's what the um, 
uh, array is storing when we have all the data being sent back and forth. So this computer knows that in you know turtle number 47 in slot 1 is Direwolf's house. So that's basically what it's checking here. Is it's uh, going ahead and getting that information out of the um, out of the array there. Okay. Now that's for um, the open portal right here. So basically what happens is we uh, toggle that button so that it turns green for a second. Uh, we do print out the name of the button that was clicked on the monitor, which is why we saw all those names a moment ago at the beginning of the video. And then it uh, goes ahead and uh, sends a message to the turtle that's storing that book. So there it has the turtle that's associated with it. So in this case, we only have one turtle. But remember, I said this system can be expanded to two or three. And it sends the information. The information is the word books followed by the slot number to pull out. So it sends the turtle message and says, uh, hey, um, give me this book from this slot. Okay, And then it sits there and waits for a response from the turtle. The turtle, on the other hand, is going to go ahead and call the book function. Okay, And it's going to go ahead and find the book by slot in the chest below it. Okay, So it says, hey, book in slot 1, for example, Dyer's Place. And it uses the uh, book function and it pushes that item up into the turtle's inventory. So again, we're using open peripherals, and the um, peripheral, the chest, is actually being told to push the item in slot one. That's the slot right here. One is the stack size, so if we had, you know, if it was a stack of cobblestone, you could say 64. But in this case, it's slot one, push it up into the turtle. Then grab that book and drop it into the inventory directly in front, which is that little receptacle right there. It waits five seconds, and then it runs the get book command, which is really pretty simple. It just goes ahead and grabs the book, it pulls it out of the slot, and then um, it drops that book back into the inventory. Now the nice thing is, like if the turtle had pulled out this book, for example, and it waited five seconds, when it goes to drop it, it winds up dropping it right back in the exact same spot because it's the only inventory slot that's available at that time. Pretty simple, right? Uh, and then it goes ahead and sends a message back to the computer that requested it, so it remembers which computer requested it. In this case, we only have one computer, obviously, but this way nothing's hard-coded, and it says, I'm done. Okay, So that's how the code works to go ahead and pull uh, the, um, the, the books out of the uh, chest and put it into the receptacle. The next function on the list reverts back to uh, the information about how we uh, were checking the names of each book. So remember I showed you guys here we had the get names command. Okay, It's really pretty easy. This is what happens when you click the refresh button. Okay, So it's associated. So we can go ahead and say, you know, flash the refresh button so that the player knows that it was actually clicked. Okay, And then um, it goes through each turtle in the list of turtles and it sends the message check slots. And that's when the turtle is told, hey, go through and check all the slots in the chest below, which was the function that I showed you a minute ago. So there's the check slot. So it's saying, hey, go ahead and check them all again. So this is just to ensure that if a book was added, it goes ahead and gets that information because it has to look at the slots again to see that there's a new book associated with it. Okay. Um, now, uh, this part of the code is associated to the old version where you used to have to manually type in the name, but you don't have to do that anymore. So right now we can go ahead and ignore that part because this is just basically writing information to the monitor saying, hey, Hey, please type a name on the computer for the book, but we don't have to do that anymore, so that's kind of nice. After that's done, it goes ahead and runs the get names function, which we saw earlier, and that's the one that actually, you know, stores all the names into some variables for us. Cool. So now basically we've gotten to the point where the computer knows all the information about what the turtle has in its inventory. Pretty cool, right? So we can go ahead and see here. There's not much else to look at except for the remove slot function. Um, when it's told to remove a slot, it'll go ahead and grab that item. But instead of putting it in the receptacle, it activates a redstone signal on its left side, which turns on this autarkic gate pulling the book out of the turtle. That's really all there is to get the you know thing out of there. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all the code. So basically, all it's doing here in its main function for the turtle is waiting for a message. So all it does is um, you know sit there and does a red net receive. It waits for a message from the computer. Then it goes ahead and takes a look at that message and determines um, two things. Usually in the message, I'm sending the name of the thing to do, and I'll sometimes send extra information like the ID or the slot to pull out. And that's how I'm breaking it down here. I'm just uh, you know splitting it up 
by the the message and the name. So I said, you know, if the message is check slots, then go ahead and run the check slots command. And if the message is get names, then run the get names function. That kind of deal. Um, and then, you know, if uh, the the message is to remove a book, it goes ahead and removes it. And then finally, um, if the message is books, then it gets the slot that was sent over with the message. And uh, we can see here, it goes ahead and actually runs that book function. Cool. So the final function I want to show you guys here on the computer is probably the fill table command. All that does is first off it clears the screen and then it um, clears the table in the button. So we don't have any information on the buttons for the monitor anymore. It defines a bunch of variables that are going to kind of be temporary or used. One of the main important ones is NPP. It's short for names per page. That's how many names we want to display per page on the screen. So if you have a smaller monitor you could shrink this down to be like 8 names per page instead of 12. But right now I've got, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Cool. Um, and then it goes through all the turtles and it counts the number of books in total. Um, the reason we have to do this in a for loop is because in Lua it's a little tricky to count the number of items in arrays. So we go ahead and just loop through all the turtles and say like, you know, just add one, right? It only takes a second to do. And it gets all the information about like how many books there are in total. Once we've done that, we basically divide by the names per page. And we can say, you know, go ahead and flip through there. You can see, you know, the total number of rows that are going to be put out. So we can see, you know, if you've got 12 books, you've only got, you know, one page. But if you've got 24 books, you're going to need two pages. Okay. And then it does a bunch of complicated code. So let me talk to you about how this works. Um, basically, it goes through all the turtles and all the slots in each turtle. And it keeps track of the, the current you know, number of slots that we've gone through, and it checks for, um, you know, which page we're on. So we'll say if we're on page one, show the first 12. And then we start with which row on the monitor to show. So that's, you know, we start with row four, and then uh, we basically say, grab the name of the book that we're looking at, the first 17 slots, for example. And then we do um, a set table, which is part of the button code. So that just says, you know, where on the monitor to show this name. Um, and then we have uh, two columns, basically. So we do, you know, row one, column one, and then row one, column two. Uh, if we're currently on column one, then, you know, go ahead and add it uh, to make it jump over to the right. So if we're currently starting on this slot, then we want to start on this slot next time we write the code. And if we're already starting on this slot, we want to start back here again, but one below, so that it can write it out like that. So this is just monitor code right here, nothing terribly exciting. So it goes through all the books, and it stores them all in buttons that it displays on the screen. And then it also defines a couple extra buttons manually, such as the set tables. So um, these guys show the next page, the previous page, the refresh, and the remove book button. And then finally, a label to tell you what page you're currently on. So that's all button code that you guys have kind of seen before. Um, so that's uh, something that I won't go too deep into. And with that, guys, that's pretty much it. It's really not the most complex code in the world. There's a couple little tricks that are being done. But for the most part, like I said, it's basically this computer looking at uh, the turtle telling me, hey, get me a list of all the books you've got underneath, and you're good to go. So with that, guys, I think I'll wrap up the uh, tutorial here. You can kind of see everything's ready, and everything should be working. Cool. If you just want to download and use it, all you got to do, like I said, is edit the portal code. So download all the paste bins that I just showed you, edit the portal code, change this turtle number to match the ID of the turtle back there, and you're ready to go. All right, guys, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the spotlight on how to do the Miscraft portal code, and take it easy.